Hey guys, today we're going to go over gestational hypertension and how to put this on a care plan. So first let's go through what we are going to cover in this lesson. Obviously we're going to be covering gestational hypertension, but I also want to note that we're going to kind of break this down um, or make sure you understand the difference between that and preeclampsia and eclampsia because um, they kind of can all run together and some of our assessment data that we'll see um, will overlap. So we'll go through that. We're going to look at the outcome that we want for this patient, the expected outcome. We're going to look at the subjective data and the objective data that we gather to put on our care plan. And then of course, how we're going to intervene. So some nursing interventions as well as the rationales. So why are we doing what we're doing and what should we see happen? Okay, so for this care plan, our medical diagnosis is gonna be gestational hypertension, our pathophysiology of this. So this is high blood pressure. And what's important to know is it's during the second half of that pregnancy. So the patient has to be over 20 weeks pregnant. Okay. If they are under 20 weeks, then don't do gestational hypertension for your care plan. That patient would be a chronic hypertensive. So they have to be 20 weeks or more pregnant. And then they have to have a few blood pressures, at least two that are 140 over 90 um, in that range. And then also this patient hopefully will have this resolve at about six weeks after delivery. So our etiology, this, the cause is a little bit unknown, but there's definitely some things that are going to put a patient more at risk. So if the patient already has some kidney disease or um, diabetes that they're dealing with prior to pregnancy, those patients will be more at risk. Also, if they've had gestational hypertension in a previous pregnancy, then they'll be more at risk to have it again. Um, some other risk factors are going to be twins, carrying multiples. Think about it. You have extra vo volume, extra weight on you because um, you're growing more than one baby. So they're going to be more at risk as well as if they're younger than 20 or older than 40. And then being African-American is another risk factor for these patients. So our desired outcome. So these patients will have a controlled blood pressure at or below 140 over 90. That is our outcome that we want to achieve. Um, and this will help have optimal functioning of the organ system. So we're not going to cause kidney damage if we can get our um, blood pressures in a good range. We want to see good kidney function, um, good organ function. And then the patient will hopefully carry the pregnancy as close to term as possible. Okay, so here's our care plan, and we're going to go through our subjective and objective data first, and then we'll go through some interventions and rationale. So our subjective data, remember, that's what the patient observes, so what the patient's reporting. So if they're telling us they have a headache, vision changes, they're nauseous, some stomach pain, which is usually the upper right side of the abdomen, or we know it as epigastric pain, but they'll just refer to it as stomach pain probably. Um, those are our subjective data that we'll gather for our care plan. Objective data. So what we are observing is a blood pressure over 140 over 90. Remember, they have to have that as a diagnostic tool for this. Um, our swelling of face, hands, and feet. So this area, face, hands, and feet are the most common areas that they'll start to all of a sudden get really swollen and retain water. Sudden weight gain because they're retaining water. Uh, they might have some vomiting and decreased urine output, especially if those kidneys are not being perfused because of the high blood pressure. And then proteinuria. So let me make this clear. Proteinuria is going to go with preeclampsia. So if this patient has gestational hypertension and suddenly they start having proteinuria, then they're going to be diagnosed with preeclampsia. And we'll get to that in our inter interventions, what we'll do for that and the rationale behind it. All right. So these are our first three interventions I want to look at for our subjective data. We're going to monitor the patient's vital signs, particularly blood pressure, assess for edema, and then weigh the patient or have her weigh herself if she's at home. So why are we doing this? Let's look at our rationale. We're monitoring the vital signs, particularly the blood pressure, because remember, this is our big um, diagnosis of this, right? Is the 140 over 90 or more. So our big diagnostics tool. So looking at that blood pressure, um, the blood pressure may fluctuate some or spike quickly. So we're just going to monitor for changes in those elevations. Then we're going to assess for edema. Now remember, typically, um, whoops, the hands, face, and feet. Um, so just checking for signs of the edema. Now, swelling is totally normal for a pregnant woman, but if they're all of a sudden getting super swollen, especially in the hands and the face, uh, we're going to be concerned about that. So we're going to watch for that and pay attention for it. And then uh, we are specifically also looking at pitting edema too. Because that's just a lot of fluid coming on fast and we worry about they're, they're getting closer into the preeclamptic phase. 
um, and then weigh the patient. So remember, they're getting that extra volume on board. Um, so weighing them, we'll see those rapid fluctuations in weight gain. So we're going to watch for that to um, watch for fluid retention. And remember that fluid retention when they have that is just kind of signifying that there's a progression of the disease and that we're having impaired renal function because the kidneys can't get it out. All right, guys, so that is all your subjective data with your interventions and your rationale. Ne next, let's take a look at our objective data. All right, so for this, our interventions, we are going to assess heart and lungs. We're going to note the rate and the rhythm. We're going to administer IV fluids and medications as appropriate. And then we're also going to monitor the fetal heart rate. Now let's look at our rationale for this. So what are we doing? We are going to assess the heart and lungs, um, noting the rate and rhythm. Now the reason for this is what? We basically want to monitor for our fluid overload signs. So are we hearing some crackles in there? Is there fluid? Uh, we're checking for fluid overload. Now, administering IV fluids, this is going to vary. If the patient's fluid overloaded, we're probably not going to give too much fluid fluids, right? Um, but if appropriate, we'll administer. And the big thing here is our medications. So our big drug that we give, um, labetalol and hydralazine. So giving some antihypertensives to help uh, bring down that blood pressure. And then if the patient has that protein urea, so if they are preeclamptic, and remember, to be preeclamptic, you have to have protein. So just remember the P and the P. Those patients are going to get mag sulfate given to them. That mag sulfate is to um, is given to prevent seizures. A seizure happening means the patient has gone from preeclamptic to eclamptic. And just refer to our lesson in the OB section on um, hypertensive in, um, hypertension and pregnancy to go over more in detail. But we're going to give mag sulfate. And the reason why is that's a seizure prevention medication, but it's also going to lower blood pressure. So kind of killing two stones or uh, two birds with one stone. So mag sulfate. All right. So we're going to even give those meds. Now we're going to monitor the fetal heart rate. Well, remember, we don't just have a mom as a patient here, right? A pregnant patient. We have a baby in there too. That's also our patient. So we need to monitor that fetal heart rate to make sure that it's tolerating. So we need good heart fetal heart rate. And that's going to help indicate that the baby's doing okay in the environment. That way, if at any time the baby is not tolerating doing well, then we can deliver that baby if we're close to that point um, in the pregnancy. So this is going to show that the baby's not in fetal distress. So think about this, okay? If the mom's blood pressure is super high, then blood flow through the placenta is not going to go well. So we have decreased placental blood flow through that placenta. And that means that the fetus is not getting the oxygen and the nutrients that it needs. And that will be shown in the heart rate. So if the fetal heart rate is starting to not look so good, um, then it's because we don't have good blood flow coming through that placenta. Okay, guys, here is the whole care plan for you to take a look at with all of our interventions and our rationale. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.